man just got a 2020 Kawasaki Mule SX XC it's got the little bit bigger tires so it gives it a little bit more ground clearance man this thing's a beaut first thing about it that's kind of funny it ain't got a speedometer but it is fuel injected and it has a fuel gauge up there hour meter parking brake which is nice it's a separate parking brake like a car steering wheel feels good you got a lot of storage on this thing for what it is this is one of the smallest side by sides but you got a lot of storage in there that's a pretty big little glove box and then up here you got another nice big frunk up here that's pretty nice you put a lot of stuff in there smells new smells good starts right up nice and quiet too this is a 400 cc air-cooled engine got a dump bed nice headache rack here nice roll bars oh man this little thing was about seventy eight hundred dollars which makes it like one of the cheapest i think that's your fuel filter inline fuel filter fuel pump air box is right here a lot of people like to think that the mules the air intake is way up here so you can go just super deep well it does intake air through there but it also intakes air right here. So you can't go any deeper than this right here. It's, it's up to your butt. But that's fine. I'm an old man now and I'm probably not gonna be doing a lot of mudding. And maybe not even any rock crawling anymore, I don't know. But this was mainly just something me and my dad could go deer hunting in and not have to double up on a four-wheeler anymore grown-ass man looks like we got a nice spot right there for a winch four-wheel drive mcpherson struts uh you know protection on the cv boots right there really ain't too bad and it ain't just awful right here but it probably i'm probably gonna put some boot guards on it but yeah pretty well protected and then of course it's a Excuse me, I'm just looking at everything. Uh, and then it's a solid axle on the rear. So, it's a utility machine. It's built to just pull trailers and stuff around the farm, but uh, we're gonna use it for hunting. All kinds of stuff. Diamond plate flooring. The pedals feel good. I got in a Honda Pioneer 500, and for whatever reason, Honda decided to put the pedals over here in the middle which is very weird they put the pedals in the middle and then the steering wheel over to the left and you kind of have to stick your foot out to drive it it feels very weird but anyway we're going to crank this thing up We just got back from riding it and here's a problem the key fault or the ignition is right there see those that little bit of threads down at the bottom that's the damn ignition this came off now the ignition is down in there there it is we'll start it well, that's not good. <sighs> that's a great first ride. One thing I've noticed after looking at it is that there's no trailer hitch back here. Period. So, um, I did buy one. It's a two-inch receiver hitch from moose i believe moose atv utv accessories i 
There you go. So I guess I'm gonna put that on here because otherwise there's no way to pull anything with this. So there we go. And voila, here we go. So you take that bolt out, that bolt out, and there's some washers right there. And then they comes with these long, I think it's a 14 millimeter and a 13 millimeter on the nut. It goes through, and then it goes through the, the mount itself, and you put the nut on. So it's kind of weird. You got the nut that's welded to the frame, sandwich in between, and then the nut holding the mount to it. And then there's U bolts underneath, four of them. Some washers and lock nuts um, I think it's kind of funny that this thing didn't even come with any kind of a hitch period but whatever I guess I'm glad I bought this it was eighty dollars I didn't know I would have needed it that bad but I suppose that I do uh, drum brakes front and rear on this thing uh, they seem to uh, I, I don't want to sound too negative but those brakes are, are barely adequate to stop this thing and uh, Got you a little pan hard bar there. Uh, dual shocks, solid axle. Uh, the rear axle or the the rear differential can lock or unlock on this thing. I wonder what twelve eighteen means. Is it December twenty eighteen? This is a twenty twenty. Maybe they just pulled pulled a diff off the shelf. Um, what's that Showa shocks there uh, these tires look pretty beefy for just some no name factory tires these are Duros these are 26 inch tires these come with the XC uh, funny thing about the 610s and the SX's is you get one tail light and one reflector <laughs> that's kind of funny uh, and then there's a bunch of heat reflective coating on the bottom of the bed but uh yeah, there's the, mo the, the motor right there. Yep. Uh, spark plug is up front, up above there. If you flip the seat up, spark plug and your, uh, I believe where you put the oil is, is up there. Now there's that there. I don't really know what that is. Maybe that's transmission? I don't know. your information on this thing looks like a VIN assembled in USA I had a Polaris guy get mad at me for even considering a Japanese side by side this was a dealer I was looking at the Rangers he said well you know you don't want to go buy a Japanese anything right now, do you? And I said, well, I don't know. It don't really matter to me. And he said, well, I think you should. He laughed at me. It was like being at a Harley dealership. And he said, you yeah, know, with all this flu going around, I don't think you need to be supporting them. And I said, come from China, not Japan. Dumbass. There's your muffler. That's a big old joker, too. It looks like a pit barbecue or something, or a smoker. That's what it looks like. Um, This right here... I believe that's the exhaust for your CVT transmission. That's pretty low. It's lower than your exhaust. Um, well. So, and then the rear suspension on this thing, that right there is the frame. And then the frame has this weird bracket that comes up and over and then diagonal down back to the frame. Uh, I guess this isn't the, even the frame. This is like the swing arm, I'm guessing. And then the motor and everything is hard mounted to that and then that little triangle that comes up that's where your pan hard bar is mounted to and then that's mounted to the bottom of the bed which I, I'm, I'm guessing this is the frame not that that's the, actually the swing arm and it's a big old complicated swing arm because the motor and the diff is uh, mounted to it mm -hmm. kind of a weird little setup they got here but this is the rear end of a Mule SX XC. Someone said that the XCs have beefier suspension. I don't know about that. I'm pretty sure it's just taller tires is all they are. 
but uh, yeah, there you go. One one tail light and one reflector. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you in a minute. As you can tell, the mule is very quiet at low speeds. It ought to be for the size muffler it's got on it. It's sprinkling just a little bit today, but we're going to take it out. And uh, try to do some actual four-wheeling on this thing. It has seat belts. It only has lap belts. Uh, and no doors and no nets, which is actually kind of cool, but the way they get away with that is because this thing can only do 25 mile an hour. There's a rattle on this thing, and I don't know where it's coming from. I've checked a lot of bolts back here behind me. That seems to be where it's coming from. Let's see if you can hear it. something like a, a Pioneer 1000 I don't know that he would want to uh, 
mess with it back here. It'd be too big. All right, we are at some guy's deer stand now. And a feeder. So, I'm going to back up. And we'll head back. I don't want to mess with this guy's stuff. But he's got a fun little trail going back to his to his deer stand. And here again, here I am doing, you know, three point turns in the woods. One good thing about this little joker is it gets around real easy in the woods. Pretty tight turns here and the mule has no problem with it, so that's good. I, I really think this right here, what I'm doing, is what this thing was really meant for and what it's probably really good at. And we're in low range now. Boy, steering this thing one-handed. Needs power steering. Power steering really would make this thing pretty neat. I mean, it's kind of known as an old man vehicle anyway. Put you some power steering on there. Uh, this is not the smoothest riding four-wheeler in the world. Got the swing arm suspension, so. Oh. But it does all right. There you go, you might can hear that rattle now. First time I've actually really used the four-wheel drive. You might can tell I'm bouncing around pretty good, but that's okay.
Well, I'm glad I made it. Uh, I'm out here by myself and I don't have a winch on this thing yet. Uh, I need a winch. Winches are great. I rode for many years on four wheelers and stuff without a winch or, or anything, out by myself even. Uh, well, if you get stuck on a four wheeler, it's bad, but on a side by side, if you get a side by side stuck, you're down and you're gonna need help to get it out. So, uh, doing all that right there, I was really making sure that I could uh, that, I, that, was, that I could make it. But I ain't got a winch, and I'm out here by myself. So uh, good on the mule for making it. Uh, I would say this thing at least has the capabilities of a of a basic four wheeler. Which honestly, I was somewhat worried about just because these things and the 4010s are both kind of known as, you know, the, the golf cart of the side by side world. And, uh, you know, they got a, a lawnmower engine and shit like that. So I was kind of hoping that it would at least be up to snuff of a basic four wheeler, and it looks like it is. It's been probably four years since I've had a four-wheeler or uh, anything like it. This is my first side-by-side -side that I've ever had. And, uh, you know, when I bought this thing, I was worried that, you know, this one, the Mule SX, or the, yeah, the Mule SX and the 4010 are called golf cart side-by-side. -side. The guy at the Polaris place I told you about a while ago, uh, you know, he told me, he said, those are golf carts. You don't want those. You don't want the SX and you don't want the, the 4010. You don't want any of those. Those have got lawnmower engines. You're, you, you don't want that. Well, uh, I think I just proved that this is a little more than a go-kart. Now, I wouldn't call this an all-out rock crawler, and um, I'm pretty sure that my old King Quad could probably go more places than this. But as you just saw, this thing will climb just fine. And it will do just fine in conditions like this. Where we're at right now is kind of like a gravel pit or a rock quarry or something. I think they're just taking dirt to build roads. But it's huge. Um, and there's hills and obstacles all around here to climb and play on. And I'm looking at a formation right over there that I'm not going to go mess with. <clears throat> but... Uh, I think you can see from the video, I mean, this is more than just a golf cart. Uh, to me, this feels like just a regular four-wheeler, but it just happens to have two seats and a dump bed. And when I say it feels like just a regular four-wheeler, I mean it feels like a solid rear axle, uh, limited slip front end four-wheeler. That's what it feels like. Uh, the, the brakes really are weak on this thing, but they do work. Uh, I don't know. I'll probably have to service them. Uh, and the ignition thing was a little bit disquieting, but surely that is uh, a one-off thing. I mean, it's tight right now. 
yeah. So uh, overall, I'm pretty impressed with its off-road capabilities. Uh, I'm a little bit baffled by the fact that it didn't come with any kind of a trailer hitch. Uh, a buddy of mine told me, he said, be sure to get a two-inch receiver hitch before you leave the dealership, and I did. And I'm glad I did, because I'm glad he said that, because this has nothing. It, you know, most every other four-wheeler I've ever had at least has a little circular spot for a ball hitch to go. Uh, and then nowadays, everything comes with a two-inch receiver. This comes with nothing, and, and this has a tow rating in all the marketing material. This has a tow rating of like 1,100 pounds or something, but uh, I don't know how they would expect you to tow with it unless they gave you a hitch. But uh, I, that right over there that I just showed you, uh, climbing up that little hill with some articulation and stuff going on, I mean, for this, for what this is, I'm pretty impressed with that. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I would say the major limitation on this thing is really just the top speed that it's governed to 25 mile an hour. And the fact that when I'm going down gravel roads and stuff, if there's any kind of an incline, you can feel this thing bog down and have to work to get up, which is so weird because at slow speeds, this thing is a goat. This thing will go anywhere you want to go at low speeds. You throw it in low and full wheel drive and lock up the rear dip and you can go wherever you want to go. But uh, it's just that at high speeds, I guess it's just the way this engine is built the power band in it uh, at high speeds this thing just does not have much power at all like it can barely pull itself up a, a slight incline in the road but that's not what this was made for uh, but that goes back to what I was saying earlier if you do have a lot of back roading and stuff maybe you might not want to get this but at the same time as far as low speeds this crawls around just as good as anything else I've missed being outside and I don't mean that from a coronavirus standpoint. I mean it from just, I haven't had a four-wheeler in a long time. I haven't been able to come to a place like this and just sit out here and be quiet for a while. In a long time. It's nice. I like it. Um, I even do this at night sometimes. I'll ride around and come to a secluded spot like this, just turn my lights out and sit here for a while. One time I did that, they were uh, doing a slash and burn out here somewhere and the fire had all gone down but the embers were still out there and uh, if you went out there and turned your lights off and just sat there it was super quiet super peaceful and then all out in front of you was little red stars down on the ground is what it looked like because it was just the embers of everything from the forest uh, burning it was a really nice night, and uh, I remember that. And uh, that's the kind of stuff that uh, you can get when you've got something like this and you're not a big mud bro who goes out getting drunk every night at the, at the mud park. Uh, I used to do a lot of mud riding, and I may edit this out <laughs> just because I'm getting off topic, but I used to do a lot of mud riding, and uh, I don't anymore just because... The whole culture of mud riding has changed, and uh, people just want to get out there and be drunk all day. That's not what I'm about. I like getting out here and being outside and playing around and taking a moment every now and then to just stop and listen. I like being by myself, honestly, when I'm out here. And uh, I like the little mule. I think it's going to be fine. I was a little worried last night when that ignition fell through the dash. Um, and I was a little worried when we took it out riding back roads and this thing was struggling to get up just basic inclines. I was a little worried. But after coming out here, it's like I said, as long as you're going slow, this thing has plenty of power and can do whatever you want to. I'm going to go see if I can climb this.
That's where I was down there. Yep. A lot of places to play around right here. This is an old trail I used to take on my four wheeler. We're gonna see how we do here. We're in four low. We've got the rear end locked. Parking brakes off. I have found that that is, that's something you need to check all the time. I don't know how many times so far I've had tried to take off with the power brake, or with the power brake, with the parking brake on. Even just a little, sometimes I think I took it off. And then a little bit later, I looked down the light still on because I didn't take it all the way off. So it's real pretty back in here. Oh, I forgot about these holes. I don't know if it's hard through here or what. Let's take it real easy. It doesn't seem to be soft or anything. Okay. I don't see no snakes. actually look for snakes. I like to come out here and look for them. When I go through creeks especially, you'll find a water moccasin. We seen a copperhead last night. I started to stop and look at it, but my wife told me no. Huh. She thought I was going to pick it up. I said, no, I don't pick those up. But I do like to go look at them. Cottonmouth, you got to kind of be careful. They'll chase you. Or maybe not chase you, but they'll stand their ground for sure. Yeah, I haven't been back here in a long time. Oh, uh, here's another one. Let's see. It looked a little softer, but it doesn't seem to be any deeper. So, okay, yeah, we're good to go. Got to be careful. Got all these. Like I said, I seen a razor a while ago running around back here on portals. Had about four foot of ground clearance. And uh, so anytime you come to a hole, you gotta be careful because you never know who's done dug it out. Even the small holes. Uh, there's one hole around here that I know of for sure. You don't want to go mess with it because it's, it's little, but you'll sink right down into it. Okay, here's the place I was looking for. Or one of them, anyway. Look at this. Now, if you've got a bunch of muddy uh, mud bros and shit, this is where they want to come, right here. Uh, that gets pretty deep out there. I've had my king quad out in it, but I wouldn't mess with it in this. And it's, a, it's got a trail that goes around back behind it to get to the back side of it. Might mess with that. But I'm, I, where I really want to go is down here. Oh. Yeah, power steering would be nice. I just got pretty good bumps here right there.
go. These are just some hills. Where's the hills at? Oh. They're all grown up, but that right there was the hill. Yeah, this thing seems to be able to do anything like a basic four-wheeler would. Any kind of four-wheeler, uh, uh, as far back as the 90s, you know, solid axle, limited slip front end. That's kind of the, that was kind of the normal four-wheeler back then. Of course, they'll have five speeds. I'm trying to get out of here there's a <clears throat> long way and a short way i'm trying to take a short way but they've uh look at that articulation they really tried to keep everybody from coming out here so the way out is actually pretty narrow right here <clears throat> and it's also angled to the left while being steep so this will be the last action shot of the day. And I'm either gonna get through or I'm gonna wreck or flip it over one. But uh, I do it for the click, so here we go. There we go. Big old black snake here. Look at this little guy. Look at them black snakes, they stick out like a sore thumb on a gravel road. Look at that. Well, this thing's neat. What you doing, buddy? Checking out my mule. A lot of people might look at that and think it's a cottonmouth. That's just a black rat snake. They're big, long sucker bills. They're black. And normally, they're real skittish. I'm surprised he didn't take off. There he is. And when I say take off, I mean take off like lightning. Well, if I'm sweating a little bit, it's because coming out of that last trail, I actually got high centered. Uh, high centered, width wise, 
and I had to rock this thing back and forth to get it to grab one way or another. Finally got it off. And uh, there again, the little side-by-side -side may be a little easier to do that. If I'd been in a big heavy thing, I don't know if I'd been able to get out here and manhandle it like that. Because I mean, I had, I was facing that way with my butt on the dash, grabbing the roll bar, rocking it like this, and using my heel to stomp the gas. Got me out though, got me out. If I have a winch on this thing, I would imagine there's not too many places I couldn't go on it, uh, you know, reasonably. But anyway, I, I think this thing's a, a good little machine. Biggest limitations are that it's not great for backroading because it goes so slow. And in high gear, it doesn't even like going up hills on the, on the, on the roads. And uh, so, that's this main drawback but on the trails and out in the woods and probably doing work around a farm i don't have a farm but uh for that kind of stuff i think it's probably really good and probably why a lot of people like these things uh all the power is down low on this thing yeah uh, but I, I haven't had any problems climbing anything today uh and this is all just basic stuff around my house and that back there where i got through that tight little squeeze while going downhill while sloped towards a sandbar or whatever the hell that was back there that was pretty impressive to me i mean that that tells me that this thing uh can hold its own it it's not going to tip over it's not going to slide these tires did pretty good i was surprised that it didn't slide off uh that's what i was really afraid of kind of that it would tip because i don't know this thing yet but also that it would slide and if it slid we were screwed that was a pretty big risk i took back there but uh this thing came out of it just fine I think it's a pretty good machine. Overall, uh, these are my first impressions of it. This is my first 24 hours with the mule, and uh, there'll be more to come. We'll see y'all later.